Okay, welcome to the 2013 AQA Comp 1 Secret Messages Programming Exam Solution Tutorials. Um, I want to produce a set of tutorials which will help you understand the secret messages code and look at a few ways of extending it. Most of it will be extending it, but this year I want to start off with a little look at one area of the code which is the Caesar cipher code just so we can get a head around what's going on. Um, so I want you to understand the code I want you to also have a vague an idea about this um, make sure you understand the mod operator and the ASC, ASCII function because um, basically this line of code here is crucial and I want you to really understand how does this code effectively apply the Caesar cipher shift? I'm assuming you know where the secret messages code has come from, that you've got a copy of it downloaded, and that you've read the Comp 1 pre-release. I also say, I'm also saying that you know roughly what these are. Bloody hell. Well, let's kill that. Uh, that you have um, read this, and so you know, you know roughly what these are. We will have a little... Um, we will have a little uh, revise of this. I'm also hoping that you're familiar with the VB.NET code. Uh, sorry for things that pop up. If I keep going back in editing, uh, it'll take forever. So you just got to trust that these tutorials happen live, really. Um, right, let's have a quick look about an ASCII table. Best thing for you to do is to Google the term ASCII table. Now, I'm hoping your teacher or you've read this in the book already, because obviously ASCII is part of COM1. Um, Basically, apply a number, and that, in, in, and that encodes a character. So for ASCII, capital A is 65, B is 66, etc., all the way up to Z, which is 90. And you can apply the same for little characters. There are a lot of non-alphabet characters. I'll just pause this and deal with it. So there's lots of non-alphabetic characters. Caesar only deals with alphabetic characters, it doesn't deal with any others. Right, let's make sure you understand the mod function. We all know that 5 divided by 2 is 2.5. At primary school, you learned that, that was 2 remained to 1. I'm just going to use this notation. 10 divided by 4 is 2 remained to 2, because 2 times 4 is 8, therefore there's 2 difference between 10 and 8, so 2 remained to 2. If you don't understand the mod function, then it's not a function, the mod operator, then you need to have a quick go at these to make sure you understand it. If you let the video run, you'll see that uh, I've got the answers on the next slide. So pause it now, have a go at these, and then check the answers in a few moments. Oh, look at that, my lettering's gone wrong as well. Okay. So those are the answers. Hopefully you got them right. Again, you can pause the video to check it. Let's have a quick look at the Caesar cipher. Right, This is from um, any one of the 100 websites that have the Caesar cipher as a nice little tutorial. If I go um, click, you can see that I shift the inner disk. I'm not going to explain the setup of the Caesar cipher. You can read that yourself. but if I shift it once, A now becomes B, B now comes C. Just note that in the COMP1 secret messages secret cipher, it does distinguish between lower and uppercase. So this should be uppercase A goes to uppercase B, not lowercase A to uppercase B. So these just pretend these are all uppercase, but this was the easiest one that I could find to actually work uh, really quickly. So, but crucially, a Z becomes an A a Y becomes a Z. If I shift 9, Y becomes H, Z becomes I, and all the way down to R would become A. So we need to be able to handle that. I'm sure you can see that um, URL, so you can come and play with this yourself. So that's the Caesar cipher. I don't want to go into any more detail on that. We're going to look at an example by Zebra. 
I'd use Hello World, but it doesn't have enough interesting characters. So by Zebra is an interesting enough and short enough test data set for us to play with. I've just got the, um, it's not really dry running, but I've put the characters there. And I've associated a character code to it. Just simply one being A, two being B. Makes sense. And we're going to apply a Caesar cipher shift of 10. It's all right. B becomes, 2 becomes 12. Well, that should be 35. Oh, bashing, bashing thing. Okay, fixed. So 25 becomes 35. You get the idea. And we just add 10 to all of them. The only problem is there isn't a character 36. There isn't a character 35. Um, even if we were to take into account lowercase and uppercase as being one long set, it, we run out of characters at some uh, stage. Now, of course, we don't use um, characters 1 to 10. So we, if we're using ASCII, and these are the ASCII characters for by zebra, including space as it happens, although that, of course, would get ignored, this is what we produce. Again, I've got non-alphabet characters, and I've got some skewing into uppercase and lowercase, and I've got some... You know, this is still not great. So what we need to be able to do is be able to add 10, but go from 25 to 26 to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and find that new letter. So Z will become 10, which is a J. So in actual fact, by Z will become Leo Jolbuk. Um And... You know, this is exactly what we want to do. Um, I could I could work it with uppercase or lowercase. We're obviously just using uppercase here. Now the problem is, it's a bit tricky to sort of add nine to twenty five. I mean, I could use sort of base twenty six, but again, how how do you program that? It, it doesn't feel that easy. But when we come back to this mod operator that I showed you earlier, um. That really is going to help us. So let's have a little look at how we're going to do that. What I want, if I'm going to shift um, the letter Z by 1, I want it to become A. So that's that's a nice, easy example to check that um, our mod's going to cope with that. So 26 plus 1 is 27. And we know that 27 mod 26 will be 1, because it would be 1 remainder 1. Okay. Seems to work. Let's do Y shifting 9, the example that we saw um, in the Caesar, Caesar cipher. We expect it to become H. So I go 25 shifting 9 to become 8. So I've got 25 plus 9 will be 34. 34 mod 26 equals 8 because it's one remainder eight. So this does look like it works. And we now need to get a head around about how we can actually encode that. Well, we know that 65 um, to 90 is ASCII, and we want to sort of get back to sort of the one to 26. So let's subtract that first. So after I've subtracted 64 from uh, any of these codes, I would end up with one, the character codes one to 26. So if I was to do just have a look at that again with the uh, Z going shifting 1 to become A. I would have uh, looking at 90 plus 1 becoming 65. Basically that is a Z shifting 1 to become A. So 90 minus 64 is 26. 26 plus 1 is 27. 27 minus 26 is 1 again. Okay, lovely. And then we add the 64 at the end to become 65. So basically, subtract it at the start, add it at the end, and we're basically shifting between a sort of 1 to 26 type character code to ASCII. So, turning that process into pseudocode, my new ASCII code would equal my old ASCII code minus 26, plus the amount shift, it was 1 in the previous case, but whatever, now make sure that's all bracketed because I'm going to mod 26 the result of that minus that plus that. And at the end of it, I'm going to add 64. And that is a that is the basis of the of the code we have in VB. 
Now there are a couple of differences. I've got this cheeky little plus 26 there. And rather than having 64, they seem to have used ASC A um, at the front and back. And instead of minus 64 and plus 64. Well, as it happens, it makes no difference whether I use my character code 0 to 25 or 1 to 26. It just doesn't matter. Um, because I'm going to subtract here and add it there. So that's not too worrying. Just so we're clear, ASC simply returns the ASCII code for um, the character in the brackets. That, that's the job. It does. This 26 is a... Oh boy, I, I don't think there's any more significance with that. If any of you can spot something more significant about this other than it looks a bit clearer, then please, please, please write a comment to here because as far as I'm concerned, this is just, you know, just to make it look nicer rather than uh, having sort of this number 65 or 64 or whatever it was. Now this plus 26 is more significant because if someone was to enter a, a negative key, so rather than shifting plus one, then this code would return a strange value without this. So now we've got, we, the users can enter a negative key up to minus 26 and this would still work. Um, So, what happens is, this use Caesar cipher, cipher, Caesar cipher loops through the uh, original text. Okay, and then for each character, it applies a shift. Now, okay, it just it checks whether it's an upper or lower case, and basically, if it's uppercase, it uses this. If it's lowercase, it uses that just because they're different character codes. But you can see for each character, it performs the shift individually. One thing to note, remember I said Caesar ciphers don't do anything to non-visual characters. Well, look, if it's not an upper or lowercase character, and we're not going to bother looking at that at the moment, it, um, it simply jumps over the whole thing and doesn't apply a shift. So spaces won't be handled, any punctuation won't be handled, um, you get the idea. And that is the end of that. You need to step through the code, and I strongly recommend you um, put a few watches on uh, different parts of this. And don't forget, when you're running this, you can add watches to just a part of the code or the whole code, um, and you can see effectively what, what numbers it would return. Uh, I'll, you'll probably see that when I'm doing some of my other pests, so I'll, I'll set that up. Hopefully you found that useful. Please add comments if you've got any questions. I do get emailed, and please answer each other's comments. Hopefully you found that useful, and I hope you're looking forward to the next pest.